Hello, hello, hello. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Thank you for joining me. My name is Teresa Harper. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator located in the Pacific Northwest in Oregon. I'm so glad that you have joined me. Let's go ahead and see who's on. I'm about, oh, I don't know, 30 seconds early. So let's get this up and see who's on. Let's see if I can find it. be really nice if Facebook would show me where to go. Hmm. Okay, let's go. Just got to get this up, you guys, so I can read your comments, but Facebook is absolutely not showing me the video. Will not find it. I'm definitely live. Hello, Jennifer. I see you on the phone. Now, if I could just find the video, it would be so much better. to be on the page. Come on. Mm. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so sorry. This book is not cooperating whatsoever. I do not want to switch into the page. I just want to see the video. Thanks. That would be really nice. <coughs> Okay. All right, so here we are. Hello, Cynthia. Hello, Laura. Hello, Jennifer. Thank you for joining me. So sorry about canceling last week. You know, with that incredible heat we had, my studio was just on fire. Plus, it was just not a good day. I had to replace the kitchen sink that night at the airport, pick Katie up, take her to the airport by 2 a.m. Yeah. You know, all the things. Busy, busy night it was. So, tonight, just a couple of reminders that if you have any of the bonus day coupons, that those must be used by August 31st. So get those orders in. If you're not planning on ordering and you have a friend who uh, would like to order, then you can give your code to them and they are transferable. They will be able to use them. And then the other thing is that all the kits in the online store are on sale up to 30% off. So be sure and check those out if you're interested in kits. Those are a quick and easy way to get things done when you're in a pinch or you're in a creative block. All right, so we're gonna get started. We're going to um, take a sneak peek from the mini catalog, the September to December 2023 catalog. This goes live to customers on September 6th, and you will be able to order. Now, if you're here in the Pacific Northwest, that will, of course, it goes live at midnight. So that would be 11 p.m. here on the 5th. So let's check that out. Can't show you the inside of the catalog. That's to get Stampin' Up! policy. But we're going to focus on the Abundant Beauty Decorative Masks. I love these masks. You get four uh, step masks to make some sunflowers. You get a houndstooth pattern. 
which I never got around to. I was going to make a card and I just didn't get to it <clears throat> today using this stencil. Um, and then you get a leaf stencil and then you get um, a snowflake stencil. And we're going to be using this on one of our projects today as well as the sunflower stencils. So I'm gonna set these two aside. We're not gonna use these. I believe these stencils are going to run around $10.50. So a very inexpensive purchase and you can do so much. You can cover houndstooth, you can use for any season. The leaves and acorns you can use for the fall or any season really. Snowflakes will run you through the winter, and then you've got this flower that looks kind of like a sunset, but of course you can make it whatever you want in whatever color you want. So let's go ahead and start with our snowflake pattern. <clears throat> First, I've got a lot of samples to show you today. So let's um, pull out our first card. We're going to be using Pecan Pie, Starry Sky, and Wild Wheat. And here's our pieces. We've got a Starry Sky card base. And let's see, did I? Yes. We're also going to be using the Snowflake Sky 3D embossing folder. This is also a sneak peek from the upcoming uh, catalog. And this is what it looks like when you run it through your cut and emboss machine. It is a 3D folder. Now I have already taken the Snowflake folder and I've run my cardstock through that folder. And this is how I did it. I just laid the front of it in there, closed that up, and very carefully ran this through my machine, ensuring that neither the right side or the left side touched the machine as I ran it through. So I've got that card base ready to go in Starry Sky. And this is a standard A2. Eight and a half by five and a half folded at four and a quarter. I did that to save us a little bit of time. We're also going to be using another sneak peek product. We're going to be using the Rustic Crate along with this. And we'll be using, this comes as a bundle. You can purchase each one separately or you can buy the bundle together and save 10% with the Rustic Crate dies. And these are what those look like. Tonight, we're going to be using this piece and this piece. And I've already cut this piece out of pecan pie. Okay, I'm gonna show you some tricks with these others. So let's set that aside. Okay, then We've cut out of vellum the largest of the stylish shapes circles. So I've got that piece here, right here already cut. And again, that's the largest one. Here's that piece of the rustic crate that I cut. And then here's another sneak peek item, the deckled circles. You get 14 dies from five and three quarters down to one inch here. And we're using um, what I like to refer to as circle number seven. And I numbered them from the largest to the smallest. There's 14 total. This is the one in the middle. And I've cut that from Starry Sky. So we've got that. Okay, so let's go ahead and set those aside. I love how these new um, decorative circle dies layer with our current 
circular punches and dies. Okay, so also from the rustic crate dies, I've cut, uh, let's see, I've cut this little die and I've cut it twice. I've cut it once in white, basic white, and I've cut it another time for the bottom piece in pecan pie. So we've got that. All right. And then the last two things we're going to be using are some embellishments. We're going to be using our festive pearls and we're going to use the metallic uh, woven ribbon in the starry sky. This is in the annual catalog as well as the festive pearls. So we'll be using those. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So we've got a piece of wild wheat, and this is cut at four by five and a quarter. And where did I put my basic white piece? Oops, apparently I didn't cut it. Okay, well, we need to do that because we need that piece. Okay, so let's get that. We need it to be three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And let's just make sure I didn't hide that in the rest of this because it just should be right there. But apparently it's not. Okay. No worries, let's just cut us one. So we're gonna cut three and seven eighths. That's the long, last longer line by the four. Three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. The first long mark right here over the, or just after the five. So we've got that, and we'll set that scrap aside for another time. Okay. So let's get started here. We're going to bring in our uh, mat, or our mask. And we're using the snowflake mask. And I just have a scrap piece of paper here. I'm going to take a little bit of temporary adhesive and just set this down on my scrap paper. And then I'm going to take my mask here. And tape that down with a little bit of post-it tape. And take my Starry Sky ink. And a blending brush and I do not want this to be dark so I'm going to rub this off and then I'm going to very gently go over this background with my starry sky and it's just that simple and then I'm going to take and lift this up and make sure that I'm, I've got what I want and I'm happy with that. So next, I would do an inside piece, three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. I've already done that. So I'll show you that. And you need to grab your envelope. And I've just taken my mask. I put my envelope flap right down in here like so. Put this right over the top like this. Laid it down and masked that up. And then to get the front of my envelope, I stuck this down, laid this down where I wanted and then stuck another piece of paper just under the edge to protect the rest of my envelope. So that way I've got matching inside, matching envelope, and the card front. 
So let's set that aside so I don't get ink all over my fingers. We've got all those pieces. Okay. Let's put this over here. So now we've got this. Where do we go from here? Well, next we're going to take and stamp our images. And again, we need some scrap of Whisper of Basic White. And where did I just set that extra piece I had? I'm going to put it over here. Okay. So we're going to take the poinsettia bunch from Rustic Crate. And with Memento ink, we're going to ink that up twice. Need two of these. Okay. And then we're going to color these with our Stampin' Blends. Okay, and this really, besides our sentiment, is really all we have to stamp. So let's go ahead and grab our stamp our, our sentiment piece. And we're going to take the little tiny For You, which is from the Rustic Crate. And I've already cut this piece. So we're going to take some wild wheat. And line this up. I'm going to bring this down to me just a little bit closer. Make sure you can still see it, but... Take that wild wheat. I'll just stamp that in the middle. Now you could stamp it and then die cut it. But this particular die cut, um, you'd need to make a template for because it's solid on this piece. Okay, let me show you that. Again. So this is the die, and this is where it comes from. So you can't actually see through it to see where you're die cutting. So you would need to cut this and make a, a template to use. Okay. So because this is ph photopolymer, I just stamped it like that. Okay. Now let's go ahead, and we're going to take this piece of that die and I wanted this to be a little bit darker so I'm taking my dark pecan pie and I I'm going to use my brush tip and I'm just going to add dark pecan pie to the pecan pie cardstock because our crate is cut in pecan pie and I want this label to stand out just a little bit from the crate, but not too much. So by taking my coordinating Stampin' Blend, I can darken that cardstock up just a bit. This is the original cardstock color, and this is what it looks like when you put the dark pecan pie over the top. Okay? So then we'll put these two pieces together to form a little label. Okay, let's go ahead and do the rest of our coloring though so that we can use the Stampin' Cut and Emboss one time. So we've got these. I didn't want you to sit and watch me color for a bit, so I've already pre-stamped and pre-colored part of this so you didn't have to watch the whole thing. So <clears throat> I want to show you my color combination here. So we've got Dark Poppy Parade, Dark Sweet Sorbet, and Light Sweet Sorbet. And I'm going to start with the Dark Poppy Parade. And to come up with this color combo, what I did was I swatched my reds. And then I decided which colors I thought would uh, coordinate nicely together to come up with the look that I was wanting. So I'm going to start with the Dark Poppy Parade. 
and I'm going to go on my poinsettia and just go around where the petals meet here and a little bit down into the center of each petal just so that I have dark centers. Nothing crazy. This is where I would have shadows. I'm putting the darkest color. And following the lines of those petals where they overlap. Okay, so that looks like I've got them all. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to switch to dark sweet sorbet. And this time I'm going to go up in these artist areas and over just the edge of my poppy parade, my dark poppy parade, to blend those colors out a bit. Just like this. And I like to work, when I've got something small like this, I like to work from the outward inward, from the outside inward. That way, if my color wants to bleed a bit, it will bleed into my project and not out of. Okay, and I think I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to go back with the light sweet sorbet. Hi, Caleb. How are you, kiddo? All right, so again, I'm working from the tips outward or inward. Filling in those petals, and what that gives me is a petal that goes from dark to light on the tips. Okay, so I'm going to just finish this up quickly. I'm going to go too quick because I don't want to go out of the lines and these tips are very thin and to avoid the bleeding I barely touch the paper on the tips. Okay, not really brushing, more like dotting. in those tight spaces. As I work down into the petals, then I don't have harsh blending lines. Okay, so those are our poinsettias. Now let's go to the leaves. And this is the color combination that I have for my leaves. And again, I swatched out these colors, the greens, to see what I liked. And then I did some sample swatching to see what color combo I liked. Okay, so like this one is the light old olive dark lemon lime twist and the light granny apple green, and that's the one that I chose. I have light, light, and dark here, so this is the same three colors but just in a different combo using two of the lights and one dark. And then I did the same thing over here. I've got dark mossy meadow, dark old olive, and light old olive. But that ultimately was not what I chose to use. So we're going to use this. And again, I'm going to start with my darkest color which is my light old olive. And I'm going to go around the tips of my petals where my leaves are and pull that away from the petal because I don't want the old olive to bleed into the petal. And then I'm going to go with the dark lemon lime twist. And on this one I'm going to go in and 
put all the lines in that the artist drew for the veins. And then I'm going to go back into that old olive a bit and blend that all together. I'm not going clear to the flower petals, but just back a bit. And then I'm going to take my light granny apple green and I'm going to go back into the dark lemon lime twist and blend a little bit and pull it out toward the tip. And there is my leaves. Okay. Then I would repeat that with both flowers till I had everything done. And finally, I'm going to take my light wild wheat and I'm just going to dot the center of those flowers. Literally, just dotting. Okay? Then here, Wink of Stella comes in. I'm going to take my Wink of Stella and just on the edges, uh, the outside edges of the petals, I'm going to put a little bit of Wink of Stella. I'm not covering the whole petal. Just the outside edge. Just want a hint of glimmer without overpowering. Okay. So there we have it, and you probably can't see that glimmer, but trust me, it's there. Okay, now we need to cut this out, and we need to die cut out of a piece of pecan pie our front of our crate. But before we die cut that, we're going to take a blending brush. and pecan pie ink. I'm going to ink that up. And we're going to put on a little bit of ink. Very, very lightly touch our dye. Okay. ahead and clean that off a bit and I just use an old towel give that a good rub to clean out the wet ink okay and then I can set that aside all right let's bring in our mini stamp and cut in emboss machine let's get this lined up first it'll be easier for me to do it that way I'm gonna take some post-it tape I'm going to line this up how I want it to be. Line that die right up. And put a piece of post-it tape on there. Grab the mini cut and emboss machine. This Boho Blue Mini Machine is still available in the online store actually three dollars less at the moment than the white mini cut in emboss and we're just going to place this in here and that looks like it moved on me a bit so let's readjust that and let's run that through our sandwich We've got base plate one, cutting plate two, then our die and paper, and then we've got another cutting plate two. So we're going to do that again, but this time we're going to put our crate front on our pecan pie. Set that down and run that through. 
And by inking that ahead of time, what we've done is we've allowed that ink to be pushed into the embossing pattern on our crate to give it just a little bit of added dimension. Okay, so if you look closely, you can see that the indentations in that crepe front are a little bit darker than the rest of it. And then all we have to do to clean that dye is take our Simply Chamois stick that on there give it a good wipe I let my chamois dry out a little much Okay, and then we're, that's all clean, ready to go. I'm just gonna set it over here, it'll dry real quick. You wanna make sure that you get it dried because it is a piece of metal. So we'll just get that nice and dry and we are good to go. All right, so I think we've got the pieces that we need for our card now. So let's go ahead and start putting these together. pieces back before I lose them. All right. So to put this crate together, we're going to take our larger piece, <clears throat> and these are score lines, so we're just going to bend those up. to the front. Okay, and then I'm going to take my bone folder and give those a good crease. And then we need some liquid glue. And I wonder where my silicone mat ran off to. Ideally, you would have your silicone mat down, but I'm not sure. I have three of them. Two of them are in my thing, and I could reach over there and grab them. The other one usually sits in front of me here on the desk, but I'm not seeing it. So I'm just going to take this piece, the front piece, attach it to the corner over here and remember I use liquid glue so I have a little bit of wiggle time. I'm going to press that corner down and then I'm going to walk my fingers around and line up this top corner right there. Give that a good press. Now you could use a different adhesive but I for this particular application I really like the liquid. So I'm just going to give that a good press with my bone folder. Okay. And there we have our crate. All right. So let's go ahead and add our flowers to our crate. So I'm going to put one in like this. And then I'm going to put another one in like this. Oh, my crate came apart. I didn't hold it long enough. Let me get that a good press again. I don't want that to fall apart on me. Okay. We're good now. I'm going to press this in here. Put this in here like so. And then I'm going to take some Stampin' Dimensionals. I'm going to take both backings off. And grab that dimensional. And I'm going to take this dimensional and stick it down in here like that. 
to stick those two pieces together and then I can pull them back out because now they'll be how I want them. And then I'm going to take another Stampin' Dimensional and I'm just using the bones of my package here. And I'm going to slide one of these right up under this side but not so it shows. Oh, come on, I didn't get it in there far enough. I've got that piece sticking out of there. There we go. Okay, so we've got that. Now I can take and take my stamp and seal and turn that over. Put some stamp and seal on the back. And then I can add this to my crate as one cohesive unit. I'm like, come on. Why are you not going in there like a, oh, because you're hung up there. There we go. Got hung up on the little hook on the back there. Okay, and then when I'm happy with that, I just give it a press. And then that is stuck into my Great. All right, let's go ahead and start putting the card base together and getting this ready so we can put everything together. I'm going to take our wild wheat and our snowflake piece and I'm going to, whoa, wait a minute. This is not, what did I cut this at? Oops. What is this? Three. This is three and seven. Minutes. Hang on. Let me look at this. Let me look at my sample card here and see what I did wrong. Okay. This is supposed to be three and three quarters by five. Okay, so let's cut that down to the correct measurement. I'm going to go this way because I've got a little bit more white over on this side. So three and three quarters by five. I cut it the exact same uh, size as my matte layer. But no worries, we can always fix it. We can always make it smaller. We can't make it bigger, but we can definitely make it smaller. That's right. That's the way it's supposed to be. Let's do it that. So then I'll just get some stamp and seal. Okay, so again, this white piece, three and three quarters by five. The wild wheat is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. I'm just going to map those up. And then we're going to add this to our card base. Which needs to be this way. I have the deboss side out. And you can use it either way, but I want the embossed side out. So, let's go ahead. I'm going to use liquid glue for this because I'm putting it on a 3D embossed piece of cardstock with a lot of nooks and crannies. So I'm going to give that a good amount of liquid glue so that it can settle into those nooks and crannies. going to take that and give it a good press so that all settles in. I like to do that. That glue to spread out. Okay. So next we've got our uh, crate and we're going to put this down on our vellum first. 
So we're going to line this up. Now I'm going to use my grid sheet here to try and get this a little bit on the straight side. Okay, so I'm just going to take some um, stamp and seal for this. So I've already put some dimensionals on my flowers. Okay. And then I'm going to put this down on my circle. Like so. Okay. I'm going to add my uh, label piece here. To the front of my crate. And remember, this Tombow liquid glue, you just need a little bit. And we will. Well, we'll pick that up if we can get it a hold of it. And then we're going to add it to our label. And again, I'm using liquid glue so that I can have a little bit of time to move that into place. All right. And then just a little bit more on the back side here. And we'll add this to the front of our crate. Like so. And now you can definitely tell the difference between this pecan pie and the marker, the blended alcohol blender marker pecan pie. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this aside. This card is almost finished. Now we're gonna add this piece to our Starry Sky and it's important to put all of your things on your vellum first so that you know where you can glue on your vellum so that it doesn't show. So now we can glue anywhere where we have paper showing through. And that will give us a nice adherence And of course, because this is a circle, it doesn't matter how we put it on the other circle. I'm just going to put that down. Okay, now we've got that. And close this up. So our glue doesn't dry out and we're going to bring back in our card base and then I'm going to take some stamp and seal put it on my starry sky deckled circle put this back on here hoping that I can get that looking like it's about straight here Just a bit. All right. Now let's go ahead and put our inside piece. I pulled the sentiment from Very Best Occasions. This is in the annual catalog. It carried over from last holiday season and it says, May your days be happy, your heart be light, your Christmas merry, and the new year bright. And of course, I have that decorative mask background on that. Let's go ahead and put that in our card. Now between you and me, I had some, these little snowflakes that I have here are retired, but I got just a tinge of Poppy Parade on that cardstock. I have no idea how, so I added those little snowflakes just to hide that red but 
We do have some snowflakes in the online exclusives that you could purchase and use in here. I just didn't have them. So I hid my mistake with a, an embellishment. Okay, now let's go ahead and get our festive pearls. And I'm going to use the gold ones. And I'm going to add three to the center of these front poinsettias. There's that, and the final touch for this card is to take the Starry Sky Woven Metallic Ribbon from the Annual Catalog, and we're going to tie ourselves a double bow here, go around those nails twice, go under and over back through and pull it taut and then we're going to take our scissors I'm going to cut one of these this direction and the other one this direction and we can take that up make sure our bows are separated there and then we're going to take a glue dot and add this to the front of our card and then we'll be all finished oops this is a brand new roll i've got to get my ribbon moving here let's tie that up i'm going to take my take your pick tool push that glue dot into the ribbon and then I'm going to lift that up and place it right here okay and there is our first project I hope you like that and I hope you enjoyed those sneak peeks of products Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks, Laura. So glad you guys liked that. All right, so let's clean up a bit. And then we can move on. I've got to get rid of all these. I don't, we're not coloring on the next one at all, so I'm pretty sure I don't need any of those. All right. Let's move these things out of the way. We still need our abundant beauty masks, so let's bring those back in. And I don't need that. Okay. Now this card has almost, well, actually, only the only stamping for this card is for the inside. Let me get that envelope. We've got that matching envelope. Let's move that out of the way. Get rid of the starry sky. Okay, get rid of these scissors. Man, I make a big mess fast. It's amazing how quickly I can make a mess. All right, let's move on. So for our next one, oh, that's a little weird. Okay, we are going to pull in, not only are we using the Abundant Beauty Masks, we're also going to use the Artistic Mix Decorative Masks. These are from the Annual Catalog. And with these, you get this pattern, a plaid pattern. This larger pattern so that you can make a multi-stepped plaid. 
And then you also get this uh, trefoil. Is that called a tref trefoil? I can't remember what those are called exactly. But any a quatrefoil pattern. And then you get this mask so that you can, it's actually a reverse mask, so that you can use those for sentiments or whatever. So we're going to be using this mask out of the decorative masks or the artist, Artistic Mix Decorative Masks in conjunction with our Abundant Beauty. And for this one, we're going to be using the four pieces for the sunflower, okay? And these are all notched and numbered for you. So let's go ahead and bring in our pieces for this one. Okay, so I've already cut some pieces to save us some time. I took some bubble bath cardstock. I added adhesive sheets to those, or to that. I've taken the wanted to say dies, and I cut the word celebrate. Okay, so that cut this. And then from early espresso, I cut the outline for celebrate. These dies are in the annual catalog. They're in the back of the catalog. They are a standalone item, and they're pretty fabulous. You get happy birthday, celebrate, feel better soon, and you're too kind along with some stars, presents, flowers, and there's some hearts here. So it's a really nice, neat set. We're going to start with a piece of bubble bath cardstock, and this is... Standard A2, five and a half by eight and a half. We've got those two pieces for the sentiment. I've got a piece of basic white, and this is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And then this piece is four by five and an eighth. Okay, we're gonna layer these three together. Let's go ahead and set this aside and get to working on our sunflowers. Okay, again, I'm going to take this and a little bit of temporary adhesive. And I'm going to set this down on my sheet. And I'm going to start with my sunflower mask. And I'm going to decide where I want my sunflowers. And I actually think I'm going to go about right here and leave a little bit of extra space. Actually, I might come down a little bit. Okay, wherever you decide to put this. Now, I'm going to make this easy on myself. I'm going to line this up with a line over here and a line up here. Okay, and then I'm going to take a pencil. I'm going to line that back up in the corner, and I'm going to, there's a notch here. And I'm just going to line that up, and then for added measure, I'm going to put myself another uh, mark down here in the corner. And then, as long as I put these, all four of these masks here, everything should line up perfectly. So let's grab some more post-it tape. lock that in place and we our color palette for this card is bubble bath moody mauve early espresso and garden green I'm gonna start with the moody mauve and I'm gonna take my brush my blending brush And this has a, a plastic piece here in the middle, so I'm going to go ahead and start there. And I don't need to wipe off up here because I'm going to start on my plastic here. And I'm just going to start swirling. Okay, and then I'm going to go back, go in that middle again. 
swirl it out and I'm happy with that color so I'm going to move this one these are a little bit smaller so I'm going to start here in the center and you could actually use your mini blending brush, brushes on this smaller image I want those to be a little bit darker in the center So we're going to do that again, same thing, all right, I'm happy with that, so I'm going to close this up, and I'm going to go ahead and lift this, if you want to take a look before you lift everything. Go ahead and lift that up. See what you have. If you're happy with it, we'll move on. Now is when I'm going to bring in my um, decorative, my artistic decorative masks. I'm going to line this up over the top of what I've already done. And I'm just going to secure this down. Making sure that I don't cover up my cardstock. And I'm pretty sure I didn't. And then I'm going to take some bubble bath. And I want this to be really light. So I'm going to rub this off. Hang on to this. And I'm not going to go in the center of these flowered areas. It's going to go around the outside here. I want a very light coat of ink here. Very light. Okay, let's go ahead and lift this up and see what we have. And I'm just going to lift up the bottom so I can drop it back down if I need to. Okay, and that is extremely light, so we're going to go back. It's a little bit harder this time, but I don't want a lot of ink. I just want a background. Which is why I chose bubble bath because it's very light. Okay, and I'm happy with that. Okay, so we can move this off to the side. We're finished with that one. And I don't know if you guys can see that texture that that added there. There you can. So that's what we've got. And then it's time for our garden green. Now, if I line this up, this is what I'm going to get. Well, I'm going to change my leaves a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and move this up a bit, and it's okay to do it. And I'm going to tape that down. So I want my leaves to be in just a little bit of a different spot than what will show up there. So I'm going to take my blending brush and this one. I'm just going to take this. I'm going to take off that harshness. And then I'm just going to go right over the top here. And again, I want this to be darker at the top than it is at the bottom so that it's shaded a bit. Okay, and then I'm going to move that, and I'm going to put a leaf up here, like so, and I'm going to 
going to take my blending brush and ink again. And I'm just going to give that a good rub there. I'm going to move this one more time just because I didn't really care for where the leaves are on this. So I'm going to move that. There we are, now I've got all my leaves. So we can finish that off. And this is almost done. Next we're going to bring in number three. And this time I'm gonna line this up with those marks I made. So that it's all lined up properly. to take my blending brush. Where did I put it? Right here. Yep, I guess it is. Okay, and we're going to take that. Let's make sure we're good. Yep, good. Okay, and I'm going to do a light coat on this one. want this to be too heavy because my next one I'm also using the same color. So I'm just going to go like that. And that looks good. And then we're going to move that off to the side. Bring this back in, line it up with those marks again. And that makes it so easy to line up. Okay, so now we've got the seeds that go in the Sunflower Center. Now I'm going to get a little bit of extra ink. And I'm going to really darken this up. And the nice thing about this is you can pull your ink from your mask here and reuse it. Okay. And finally, we've got this. Okay. All right. And now for the final reveal. There we go. Now we have a beautiful card front. Now let's just make sure I don't have any inks on my hands before I touch that. Move this to the side. We're gonna add this piece to our Moody Mauve. Of course, while I was doing all my stenciling, I would do the inside of my card and my envelope so that it was more efficient. But I've already done those pieces to save us a bunch of time. And what did I do with my, well, we'll use the ruler because I'm not sure where I lay, oh, there's my little folder folder. Okay, then we're going to add this to our card base. Okay, and next we'll add our celebrate together. Now remember, I used adhesive sheet on the back of this Celebrate. So I'm just going to take my Take Your Pick tool and I'm going to start at the edge of the E. I'm just going to separate the backing of the adhesive sheet 
from the die cut very gently. The nice things about these adhesive sheets is, is until you burnish them down, they don't, they're not sticky sticky. I mean, they're sticky, but they're not permanent. So I'm gonna use my tweezers here and I'm gonna start with the B. Hold this B and I'm gonna put that C about where I want it. And then I'm gonna slowly set down the rest of my word here. Let's get the B in place. Get that R into place. That. Okay, now this isn't permanent. I can still move it if I want to, but I don't because I've got it exactly how I want it. Now I'm going to turn it over, give it a good burnish, and then that will not come undone. Okay, so now we're going to take this and add it to the front of our card, and we could add it up here. Or we could add it down here, which is where I'm going to add it. And I'm going to add it with some mini dimensionals. Well, I am if I can see where I put them. Okay, let's grab out some minis. I'm not sure where my package went. But we're going to pull some minis off of here. Just put them in all these places. And then I'm going to take a piece of the bones for the C. I need some real skinny pieces. So I'm just going to use a piece of here, this section here, not too fat. Put it in here so it doesn't show. Make sure that's not going to show. Nope. Okay, and then we'll get another really small piece. And we'll add it if it'll stop sticking to my finger down here. Just to give that good support. Pick those wax papers off. This to the front of our card, like so, and then, like I said, I pre stenciled the inside of my card. I did not put a sentiment on here because this celebrate could be for a lot of different occasions, and I don't know what it would be used for, so I'll add that later. But I've put a little sunflower down in the, partial sunflower, the big one down in the bottom. And I've added that pattern that we put on the front. I brought that to the inside, but you can still stamp an early espresso and easily see your sentiment. And then to match that up, I've got a matching envelope. The final piece for this card we're going to add some of the 2022, 2023 to 2025 in-colored dots. And I had one of the Moody Mobs left over here, so let's go ahead and grab that. Grab that large one. And I'm going to put this up here. And then I'm going to take a small one, put it up here and a medium size I'm going to put right here and there you have it all right so those are our sneak peeks with our abundant beauty decorative masks for this week let's bring back in that first card that we made here's those now I have multiple samples. Let me move all of this stuff out of the way so we can 
get those out. All right. So here's a card I did for a color challenge, and I'll be posting that on the KNT Designs Stamper Social Group. And then here's one I did with the Just Wanted to Say and the Happy Birthday die. This also uses the whims uh, Stitched with Whimsy dies on the outside, and this is one of those artistic masks. So we've got that one. Here is a card that I used with the Leaf Mask. This is the new copper... Uh, natural trim and copper ribbon that's in the new mini coming on September 6th. This one I used a circle and then this hope your day is a happy one is another sneak peek from So Sincere coming in the catalog. The decorative mask here or the decorative embossing folder is called Distressed Tile. That's also a sneak peek coming so there's a cute card. So we've got all those. See if we can get them all in the picture here. And finally, here's another one of those decorative masks done in the yellows, though. All right. So I hope you've liked those sneak peeks. And I hope you can see their value for, I, I believe it's $10.50. You can make cards for just about any season, throw in some sentiments, and you are good to go. All right, everybody, I will see you back here next week, same time, same channel, with some more projects. Thank you so much. Good night. Mm.